Hey guys, it's Tori and I'm here right now with Aaron and Spencer from Under Oath. Hello. How are you guys doing? Wonderful, how are you? I am fantastic. Very excited to be sitting here with you guys. Feel like you've been a bit of the buzz band today, huh? How are you feeling here at Rockville? We've been awake since 4 a.m. so I don't really... <laughs> so tell me how you're really feeling. I, I, I'm exhausted. My phone <laughs> is apparently playing music right now. You know, we've all been there. We've all had that moment when that happens at yeah. the wrong time. <laughs> no, it's been, it was, it's been a really cool thing. We've never played this thing before, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been really fun, so. For sure. Yeah, And um, Yeah, so the thing with Rockville is you're kind of seeing more festivals like this coming up, getting bigger, and also Warp Tour at the same time is uh, in its last year, and that's sort of your roots a little bit, like that sure. scene. Yeah. Um, so how are you kind of feeling about this rock music being in a transitional period as far as festivals and live music is concerned? Where are you seeing it heading now? Next. You could sit around and pound about Warped Tour being over or where we started or this is different, but I think change yeah. is good and there's obviously a ton of people here and it's yeah. they're yeah. they're just as accepting as the early Warped Tour crowds were. So sure. it's it's cool for a band like us that's been around for so long to uh, play in front of some new people. So yeah. I don't change know, I is good, man. I think that if you I think a lot of artists in the rock music genre have done a lot of complaining about the change and the way things are, and I, it just doesn't help. Right. I you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't help to complain. Like, make great art and people will pay attention. It's a refreshing mindset because I feel like yeah. a lot of people, like you said, are kind of pouting about Warp Tour ending, but it's time for a new beginning. I feel that. How many years was it? You know? Like, as, as many as I've been alive. Yeah. To, yeah. I'm 22. God help me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's. And also, it turns it into a melting pot, right? So, like, a, right. a lot of these bands playing today. Under Oath would never play with before. Exactly. Like yeah. Ozzy Osbourne. Would we have ever seen the day that that happened? Exactly what Warped Tour was when it started. It, 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 you know? so it's so it's just a shift. Thing. Yeah, like us and the U's playing on the same stage as Five Finger Death Punch and Ozzy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the order of the show today. It's pretty ridiculous. Us and the U's, Five Finger Death Punch, and Ozzy. Yeah. And that's really neat. And it does expose you to a new audience that you otherwise would have never reached. So it is eclectic, pretty great. It's eclectic and it's, it gives me hope for rock music, you know, that like that we can begin making new moves and begin doing fresh things. So. Absolutely. And so speaking of new beginnings, we have a lot to talk about as far as Under Oath is concerned, don't sure. we? Um, Erase Me is the latest album out now. Two first album in eight years yeah. and first one since reuniting. No big deal or anything. Yeah. Um, so how did you guys know that it was finally the right time to start working on a new album and, and release this thing? Spencer and I began writing just a few days after the first the tour. first tour back, yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, I I I think that we didn't even know if it was going to happen when we started writing. I think it was more like, oh my God, why haven't we been doing this? This is insane. Like, what are we doing? So, you know, so right, like let's just see how this goes, yeah. kind of thing. I got you. Experimentation. Yeah. And so, which al which song on this album do you think per perfectly represents where you're at now in your career? Like where your headspace is at. I don't know. I think the record we, we we wrote 30 songs for this thing, and I don't think you can really pinpoint a song, which is why there's not a title track, which is why you know we try to make an album feel like an album and flow in a certain way. And every song has its important piece, which is why when you release singles before the record, it doesn't sometimes make sense to everybody until they hear the whole thing. I'm one of those people. I don't I don't like singles. I don't like you not hearing the first song first or something coming out early, but that's just, you know, that's how the industry works. But I can't really pinpoint a song because I think it's it's where we're at is Erase Me, not any particular song on the album. I think it's, as a whole, it, it kind of, because there's soft parts, there's pop parts, there's really heavy parts and really technical stuff. And yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a, there's not a stronger or weaker song on the record. Well, that's good to hear. And it does yeah. kind of sound like also when you talk about the album that the, the track listing and the order that it's in seems important to you guys. Which Is that true? Yeah. Is there a significance to that? It's just the way we like want it flow. to be. Yeah, it's yeah. the way we want people to hear it. You know, sure. it's the way it feels right to us. Yeah. And I mean, it's a time yeah. right now where people don't really listen to albums. It's more about singles and the whole thing. So this is a, for us, it's, it's always been important. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And another thing that uh, has kind of been a bit of a buzz online, as far as I've seen, is sort of the fact that you guys have kind of skewed from your Christian roots. That when you guys started off, you did kind of have those core beliefs, and now you're on to new things. Um, so how have the fans that have been around for that long and remember the older under oath, how have they been receiving the new direction that you're in now? 
We want to make music that's for everybody, not for one type of person, not for one type of sex, creed, you know, race, all that, dude, music's supposed to be universal, it's supposed to be for everybody, and, and I think any sort of subcategory you put on it, even saying like metalcore or, or whatever, like that's already kind of limiting people to not want to hear it, you know, I think a band should be a band, like what does Under Oath sound like, what well, sounds like Under Oath, you know, like what does Led Zeppelin sound like, I don't know, every record sounds different, but it's still Led Zeppelin, you know, like, uh, yeah, I mean, we... I think every time you do anything that it's going to have change and that people aren't uh, going to all jump on board and accept it because it is different. It's not the undergrowth you're used to hearing and like it's not safe to you. We rustled your feathers and we, we, we challenged you and that that's not okay for a lot of people but eventually once the dust settles if you can just listen to it for what it is you'll probably appreciate it you know whether it's your genre of choice or not that doesn't really matter to us. We made music that we're happy with. And, we took away the labels so our band can exist, because with the labels, it does not exist. Mm -hmm. If the Christian audience wants us to be a Christian band, then we'll just go break up again. Yeah. It's as and simple we, as that. It does sound like you guys are more open to all demographics, and I guess in a way that that's what you draw in when you're you open can. to that. Once you begin excluding people, you're in deep shit at that point. Like anybody, because of their sex, or like you said, their race, their religion, their like that's it doesn't make any sense. And and once you begin putting a label on music, you make it for for a, a certain group of people. And I just don't I don't believe in that. Exactly. You know what I mean? So yeah. I feel that. that yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, what else do you guys have coming up? Rockville is ending after today for you guys. So what's coming up after this that fans can look forward to? Our tour started today. Okay. Yeah. So. so it's just beginning for you. Yeah. It's us and Dance Gavin. Dance. Oh, nice. Uh, Fail of Maya. And a band called Limbs is opening, and that starts. The first, like, indoor show of that is on mon Monday. So we play Fort Rock tomorrow, all the Danny Wimmer festivals on this along this tour. So we're doing them all on this tour. So, and then shows in between. So that started today. So. I'm also very impressed that you know the days of the week because you're doing better than me right now. We just went home <laughs> yesterday. So okay. it's just getting started. Today's We've been awake since 4 a.m. <laughs> we played on the radio at, on 98 Rock in Tampa this morning, Spencer and I. At 8 a.m., which is three hours away from here, the bus had to be here at 8 a.m. Uh -huh. You know, so I respect we your up, hustle. We were up at 4.45 this morning to get there before morning traffic, the to play on the air for two hours, then to get here. We got here about an hour before our set time. Played, it feels like two long days. Played, so did hard. a signing. Inhaled food for about five minutes. First meal. We came here. Our first meal I'm so sorry that I cut your meal short. No, but no, hey, I mean, we, we chose to come. We chose to come early, so. Okay. Well, that's that's good to hear. So I hope you get some rest before the rest of this tour kicks off. Um, and thank you so much for hanging out. It was great talking to you. Yeah, everybody watching, erase me. Make sure you check it out. Subscribe for more interviews, and we'll catch you later. Bye.